Extremely 3D Beetle on an Autumn Toned Leaf Acrylic Nailer Tutorial by Hot Pink Zebra Polish. Hi everyone! In today's video, I'm going to be showing you this really cute extreme 3D beetle nail that's got some gorgeous peacock powder on the back of it, which is like a duochrome and a holographic powder combined. So it's got this really pretty purple green duochrome, and then it also has these like streaks of holographic in it, in the sunlight especially. So it's so cool and it definitely reminds me of a beetle. And then it's got a gorgeous fall maple style leaf in the background. Instead of having the five segments like a maple leaf does, it's got three just so it fits better on a nail. But that is the kind of leaf that I base this off of. Um, and also I want to say that this also ties back to a painting that is on my art channel. So if you like beetles and you like leaves, please check that out. I am in love with this painting. It is something I've planned to do for a while. It got postponed a little bit, so I was really glad to be able to get it done for you. I hope you guys like this and don't forget to click subscribe to see all my future videos as well. So here is that peacock powder that I mentioned. It's from Beauty Big Bang. And so I'm just going to show it to you in the little jar because you can even tell how gorgeous it is in the jar so get that little sealed for your protection thing off of there. i hate those things those are the biggest pain in my butt i can never get them off it takes like eight tools and 15 minutes and usually a few eye rolls for me to get those off <laughs> like it like you saw start with a silicone tool then a dotting tool then a little scissors and then as you can see i don't know if you can even tell how gorgeous it is in the video but even when you first open up the jars of the peacock powder, you can see like this rainbow of color just sort of spread across them. They're gorgeous. So then I'm going to start my nail with just an overlay of clear acrylic. So this background is pretty much non-existent. You don't really want it to be seen. You don't want there to be any, I don't know, you just kind of want it to disappear. You could also do it with say a white or like a creamy yellow or something, but you don't want it to be a color that is going to take away from your leaf or your beetle. So I decided just to go with clear and make it look like there's just a leaf on the nail and there's nothing else. And I'm really happy with the way it turned out, especially since you can see a little bit of that natural nail up near the cuticle between the little points of the top of the leaf. I think that looks really good. So now I'm going to be filing the nail into shape and I started with a pretty coarse bit just to get rid of most of like the the bulk of it. Now this nail is very thin. I wanted the thin I want I wanted it to be thin. So I just, you know, I filed it really nice and thin and sleek. So now on a post note, I'm just going to be drawing out the shape of my leaf. So have all those little peaks in there. Kind of try to keep it symmetrical from side to side and then add all of those different things on there and hold or keep your nail near it so that you can see what you're doing. And then I'm going to just place a nail form backing over the top of it and start sculpting out the leaf itself. Now, all of the colors in the leaf are done with colored acrylic. Now, if you wanted to, you could just do this with a single color and then kind of watercolor over it with diluted acrylic paints to get that little wash of color. Now, especially if you're not if you aren't really accustomed to making a color fade with acrylic, that might be the way to go. Just do it with, say, an orange and then kind of add those other colors with it later. It might be easier for you. I like working with colored acrylic, so I just did the whole thing with that. I think it worked out really well for me. So then I'm just going to do the middle section only. So don't do the entire leaf. Just do a little bit right on that middle area. So you can see through the nail form backing or any kind of sticker paper onto your post-it note. And then you can kind of use that as a guide to sculpt out your leaf. So once that is set so that all of the acrylic is matte, you can slide your brush underneath your little leaf image and pick it up and then set it on the nail. Try to get this as centered as you can. It might not be easy and you might have to kind of push it and finagle it a little bit to get it on there right, but you want it to be as centered as it possibly can be. And then you're going to want to go through and repeat the steps for both the left and the right segments of the leaf. So just do them one piece at a time, just kind of keep it simple and do it that way. Now, the reason I've never really explained, I don't think, why I use post-it notes specifically whenever I'm sculpting these things. And the reason I use a post-it note is because then the paper can't wiggle around on you when you are working on this because it is stuck down to your table. Now your nail form backing can move, but if you have two items that are mobile, that's not good. And if you have problems with your nail form backing moving, you can always tape that in place as well if you want to get everything really stable. So then I've got my, I picked up the second section of the leaf and I set that down on the nail. And then I set that on a different nail form backing so that, because it's kind of sticky on the back of that exposed part of the leaf. So I'm just going to set that down so it doesn't get stuck to anything. And then work on the last section, let it turn matte. Then I'm going to pick it up and set it down so it fits right up. And as you can see, you can see the little seam between all of the sections of the leaf over there on the side. You can tell that you can, I mean, there's like a bump and the colors don't match up perfectly. So 
there now you have to add little blender bits little blender pieces of acrylic so i did that pretty much with yellow and orange my yellow is kind of a semi sheer color i mean it, it is it's i don't know it wants to be opaque it tries but it's just not quite there so that blends colors together really nicely and then my orange acrylic just because so much of the leaf is orange that's really what worked out well so i use those two and i'm going to be filling in behind those little exposed leaf areas with some clear acrylic just kind of leveling them out with the back of the nail now the reason i'm doing this is because i don't know you can even tell that they're moving and they're completely set they're just they're so thin that they really need a little bit of help to stay from bending or breaking or anything and now on a nail form backing once again i'm going to start working on my beetle so i'm going to begin with his abdomen and thorax so i've just got kind of like a a guitar pick shape going on there and then I'm going to be adding an oval on top of it sorry I'm a little bit off camera there but I'm just going to kind of work on that and just kind of pull it in and this is just the very first layer of your acrylic so this beetle is getting he has several different parts that get stuck together and segments and everything and so there's just the first bit of it so I'm going to let that set for just a second and then I'm going to add a second layer over his abdomen so just a little bit over his back or his butt area just a little bit and the reason i did that part in two sections at this point is because then i'm going to take a silicone tool in just a moment and i'm going to be carving out the divisions on his back so he's got these two wing covers and you're gonna want to just kind of create a line down the center of his back to separate them then you're going to want to apply no wipe gel top coat over the top of your black beetle back black beetle back huh fun and then you're going to cure that and now you're going to be applying your peacock powder and i'm just using the little sponge applicator that came with the peacock powder and as you can see i don't know you can't even hardly tell in the video it's so pretty it's so pretty i know that i don't remember who i was showing this nail to and i think it might have been my dad he goes wow that stuff is made to make beetles so you know it's fitting so the thread i also cut out the little bits of legs and antenna for out of thread and then i have another section that is basically just a base that is a head and then a very very simple shape for his thorax and everything just to kind of it's smaller you want to make sure it's smaller than the back that you've made already and then you're gonna attach your legs to that bit and then you're also gonna attach the back onto there so then just make sure you add a little bit more to his head cover up the antennas and then on your leaf you're gonna want to add a couple little bits of clear acrylic just kind of build that up as a pedestal for your beetle to set on so that he's not flat against the leaf because they do kind of they sit up a little bit from the leaf so you're gonna want to have just a little bit of a spacer and since it's clear it doesn't really get seen in the end but it's gonna make it so that your beetle is up a little bit higher off the leaf and makes it just look a little bit better and if you want to get better instructions on making the beetle I have other uh, extreme 3d insect videos i have a beetle that's very similar to this just not autumn toned and i used foil in that one instead of using the pigments that was actually before any of these fun pigments were available this was a little oh, about i don't know it was a while ago but i will put a link to that in the description box below and you wouldn't miss that little second section of the beetle sculpting because my camera went dead i believe is what happened here i don't know camera problems i tell you so then i'm taking after my beetle is attached, I'm just going to take red acrylic paint and add the veins in my leaf. Now, you could have done this pre-attaching the beetle, but I don't do things in the proper order sometimes, so I did that a little bit backwards. And then with white, I'm going to be adding two little lines on the side of his head. These actually aren't for his eyes, but they're for like the little false eyes that they have. And then I'm going to be cutting off his legs. <laughs> that sounds horrible. I'm going to be cutting off extra length from his legs. I'm just going to kind of measure, see how long I want them to be, and then trim them off with my manicure scissors that clearly needs to be replaced because it's not cutting things very well. And then I'm going to take that white paint again and add little stripes on his legs to make them all spotty. It's my favorite thing about beetles. Their legs are amazing. All of their legs, they're all different. Some of them have that duochrome essence like um, this guy's back does. Some of them, I mean, they're just, they're all different. They're awesome. So more striped. I don't know. I enjoy them and then I'm gonna put matte top coat over the top of the leaf itself and then after that's well pretty much dry I'm gonna take and I'm gonna be gluing his legs in place so I'm just gonna take a tiny bit of nail glue which is dreadful stuff and I'm going to be gluing each leg into into position so his the front leg the leg closest to his head you're gonna to want to curve that forward his back leg the one that's farthest farthest in the back you're going to want to curve that backwards and the one that's in the middle can go either direction now usually i would take that one backwards but on this guy because of the way he's sitting on the leaf i have one of them that goes forwards and one of them that goes backwards they go almost straight out but you kind of have to choose if it's kind of curved which direction and they can go either, either way but you have to kind of pick so on the one side the side that i've done already it's curved backwards ever so slightly 
And on the other side, the one that I'll be doing in just a second, it didn't really fit properly if it was curved backwards, just the way, like I said, it was positioned on the leaf. So it's curved ever so slightly forwards, which I mean, that works out. Beetles have pretty good control of their legs. So I'll be adding that last leg and really, if you have good nail glue, this process shouldn't be too much of a headache, but if your nail glue is being a pain in the butt, it's going to make you want to just scream. So be prepared for that. And then I'm going to be applying gel sealer over that clear background that's showing through. That's just going to make it even more invisible. And then apply gel sealer over the beetle and all of his thread areas. So over his antennas and his legs, just a very light layout. It's going to stiffen them and make sure that they kind of hold their shape a little bit better. And after that's cured, you are all set. This beetle is gorgeous. His duochrome powder shows up or his peacock powder, I suppose, shows up really well. I love how you can see the leaf from both the top and the bottom. I just, I'm I'm in love with this nail. It's probably one of my favorites that I've done in a long time. So I hope you guys like it too. And don't forget to check out that video on my art channel. I'll put a link to it in the description box below and I will see you in my next video. Bye.